Okay, hi everybody, it's Belinda O'Connor here from Bioptic Drivers Australia and I have with me Susan Germano and Susan Germano is uh, someone who's living with achromatopsia, the same as myself. And we met through the Facebook group, the International Facebook group, Achromatopsia Support Network. Um, and we've been discussing achromatopsia and driving for many, many years. And I'll let Susan talk about her journey because the reason I'm a bioptic driver today is really because of Susan. Yep. So, so Susan, uh, tell me about your experience of becoming a bioptic driver um, and really what your life was like prior um, to being a bioptic driver and the difference that this made for you. All right, well, I got my bioptic license in 2015, so it's been about eight years now. Yeah. But we first started, um, my doctor tried when I was 16, so way back in the late 70s. Um, he was a low vision specialist, but he just could not figure out what to do with the achromatopsia. There was too much glare, a um, little bit difficulty with the seeing the red lights, but he didn't have enough tint protection. Mm -hmm. The scope didn't have any protection, so basically as soon as I looked through the scope, I was blinded. Yeah. So at that point, you know, he said, I don't think you're going to be a candidate, so I pretty much took that um, at face value for most of my life. Um, so my parents raised me to be super independent. I started walking to school in first grade. Um, they didn't worry about their visually impaired child crossing streets. Or, you know, I learned how to do all that. Excellent. Um, I started riding public transportation at 12. So I was, you know, very independent, took the bus places. Um, there was no, obviously, Uber or Lyft when I was, <laughs> with, was young. So it was a lot of regular public transportation. Yeah. And, you know, even though I was extremely independent, it was still super limiting. Mm. You, it limited where you could live because you had to be near a bus stop, um, how long it would take to get places. Um, a lot of my things would be like 10 minutes in a car, but it'd be like two hours on the bus. So it limits what you can do in a day. Um, like I'd have to take an entire day off from work just to do a doctor's appointment, do yeah, the buses. I remember those days as yes. well. Yeah. So, but now, I, one of the most amazing things once I got my license was being able to do like a, a series of errands all in one day. Oh, amazing. Um, yeah. Bring my gym bag, go to the gym first, um, throw that in the car, go get my nails done or whatever, go to Target and grab some stuff, go to Costco and grab some stuff, and all that could be put in the car. Yeah. Prior to that, it'd be like if I went to the gym and then a store, it'd be like bring my gym bag into the grocery store. You know, you're getting looks because are you stealing things? <laughs> or, you know, there was a time I brought grocery store bags into Costco, you mm -hmm. know, and that just, there's, you know, people are like, it's kind of weird because, yeah. you know, they don't understand it. So, yeah. you know, one of the most amazing things was like doing these series of errands all within a few hours. Yeah. Independent, got to keep everything in the car. Um, yeah. It's allowed me to do a lot of the activities I like to do. I have. German Shepherds, I do yep. dog training. She has five fabulous <laughs> German, German Shepherds here right now, and I'm yes. really surprised that they're not barking, but if they bark, just, just ignore them and listen to us. Yes, I have four of my own, and I also foster, so um, I do have to do a lot of transportation of dogs, going to the vet, going to dog training, and this is something that, re despite the fact that I was very independent, I could not do on a bus. You're not going to be able to bring a dog on a bus. Yeah. Um, you know, everything is too far away to walk to, so it's really opened up a world and allowed me to enjoy activities that I like. And, yeah. you know, now it, what's crazy is offering to be able to pick up someone else. Yeah, I know. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's certainly been my experience too. Um, one, one thing that really um, uh, came home to me in terms of being a bioptic driver, I'm, I'm a regular cyclist and I go to um, bunch riding um, in the morning with groups. Um, and there was one morning where the ground was, was wet and um, in this one path of road there were um, three people in different groups that had had crashes mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I was in, in the back group because I'm, I'm not particularly fit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, nothing to do with my vision but it's, it's, it's about fitness and so um, um, because I was, only, because I was uh, one of the only people who had driven my car to the meeting point, um, they were like, "Oh yeah, fine, um, that, that's great. Go and go and grab your car." And and so, you know, I was able to fit 
um, all three of, of um, um, the, the bikes from the injured riders um, and myself and an additional person who was semi-injured um, and, and, and be able to take them to other places while the right. other people went in the ambulances because they were, they were quite badly hurt. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but people now just accept that, that, that I drive. They, they know that I have low vision um, as I started as a cyclist and they've watched my, my progression grow as both a road cyclist and a mountain biker and, and now as, as a driver and people are comfortable riding with me. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so so um, when when you um, um, were um, started working and then and then you had your daughter, um, you weren't driving then. No, what was no, that I, like? I, I was dragging my uh, daughter on the bus. Um, I was with her father at the time, but he actually didn't like driving, which was an unfortunate <laughs> situation to be in. Um, but. I would take her like to the zoo on the bus. Um, I would take her to school on the bus, um, and it was pretty crazy. She's used to having to run to make a bus because one was late, and you know the other bus is leaving, and so we're like running for the bus. So she was used to doing a lot of that. Um, I was probably the only one who could give directions around the city based on the bus route, not the fastest route, but I could get anywhere. It yeah. just wasn't the most efficient route. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we did a lot of, you know, and it limited, you know, where she could go to school. Yeah. Um, she went to Montessori school and it was not on the bus. It was, it, I could have gotten there on the bus, but it was like four hours. Yeah. Um, so when I split up with her father, um, even though the Montessori school, she only had one year left for elementary, they offered, you know, a scholarship. I had no way to get her there. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know, so, and now I would have. Yes, so. exactly. Yeah. And so um, not being able to drive then would not have given you the capacity to do those extracurricular activities and also contribute to society like fostering dogs. Exactly. Yeah. And then being able to to um, do a whole lot of things at 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 once. All that all that um, shuffling of um, um, doing the groceries, going to the gym, and and everything in in one day. Right. And because you have a car, you can do that now. Exactly. I mean, most of the time when I was taking the bus, somehow, no matter what I was going to, it was like an hour and a half to two hours. Yeah. So by the time you do that for work, you know, you had four hours on your work day, yeah. and that's twelve hours of your day. Um, I hear you. I I definitely remember those days. Yeah. And and you just become this solo person who doesn't interact with anyone you're on public transport you go from your work or your study and you just don't have the capacity to be part of society right exactly yeah it makes it hard so um what i'd like to hear about is your experience of becoming a bioptic driver um but particularly how you learnt to use the bioptic and transition from um say um um, activities to learn the bioptic and then in the car because um, you and I were both born with our condition we went through school we used a little a little monocular which you'd pull on your hand and you'd have to learn to be able to look through that while you're writing down down your notes and quickly be able to target you know those calcular formulas mm-hmm. and and where the teacher was at um, but and then um, learning to use use the bioptic is just the bioptic is sitting in the glasses rather than in, in your hand. Um, so um, tell me a bit about how you learnt to use the bioptic for the driving task and what that meant in the car and, and being able to do it um, efficiently. Okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly as you said. I started very young using binoculars and a monocular because my parents, even though I was visually impaired, legally blind, they would take me places that required sight yeah. and they just gave me binoculars. So yeah. I was used to going to baseball games, going to the zoo. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, a lot of parents don't do that for their low vision children because they're like, well, if they can't see it. Yeah. But what that taught me to do was to efficiently use binoculars to be able yeah. to find stuff quickly. Um, and then it transitioned into school where mm-hmm. I would use a monocular. And, you know, you're, the teacher's writing notes on the board and you're having to spot really quickly where they are so you can take your notes. You, you can't be wasting a lot of time where they leave off. So you, you get used to being able to quickly get back to where you were last looking. Yeah. And I think the fact that I used it so much for regular life, for school, 
that I was able to transition fairly easily into yeah. a bioptic. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I started, um, it was 2013, I went to see Dr. Windsor at the Low Vision Center of Indiana just to get some different color contacts because I heard he had some different colors that he used for um, people with achromatopsia. So I went there for that, Mm -hmm. and he thought I'd be a good candidate for driving. Excellent. So we started with the color tints, but then he also had a program to go through to learn to use the bioptic. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a three ring binder with a lot of different things in it. Um, there like were things, flash cards. flash cards that yeah. I could either put up on the wall or have someone flash really quick. Mm-hmm. Um, do a lot of that. There was some stuff like look at it on the computer from yeah. a distance as the things would come up and try and read like the street signs. Then I transitioned into just walking around the neighborhood or riding as a passenger and trying to spot different things. Yeah. And I think because I was very natural at using a lot of this stuff, it came easily for me. Mm-hmm. Some people it takes a little longer, especially if they aren't used to using yeah. a monocular. Yeah. Um, so I would encourage all parents to let your kid use a monocular. I know Absolutely. how great the phone is right now for looking at stuff. Yeah. But if you ever want to consider bioptic driving, I think a monocular as a main tool would be... Um, beneficial absolutely because the phone using the phone as a, a, a camera or a magnifier isn't going to transition yeah. into using a bioptic yeah. and and phone batteries go dead too and I find having a monocular just sitting in your hand using it to um, read say bus numbers or mm-hmm. street signs when when you're walking around um, is is um, really really easy to use and it just kind of you know, fits in, in any hand. Exactly. And, and you exactly. You're not trying to hold up. up a phone. Yeah, exactly. It's easy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And so, I, you know, I, I think that was a big help. Mm. Um, and then, like I said, he had that whole program, passenger in a car. Um, I'd, I'd ride around and, you know, call out different things that I could see. Yeah. And getting the, the big the practice of just being able to find something very quickly. Yeah. Like, I know where I want to look and be able to target that super quick. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in terms of targeting, one of the criticisms of bioptic driving is that the person who's using the bioptic would fixate for too long. And then um, by the time that they've gone in and out of their bioptic, they've potentially traveled the whole distance of a football field. Now, um, now for me, that's really an, an, an academic argument and, and not true in reality. Correct. Because um, you, you, you learn to use the bioptic so efficiently in um, the pre-driver phases, passenger in car phases, and then actually in the car. Um, and even though in Australia I didn't have much training at all, I basically ha- had to do it myself. Right. Um, um, that, that doesn't happen to me. Mm-hmm. And, and, um, and a driving instructor would never let you go through to a, to a, a test if, if you ever fixated for a long period of time to allow that to happen. Um, so, so what was your experience in trying to ensure that your fixation time was, 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 was quick and, and also when, when you would and wouldn't use your bioptic? Right. Exactly. Like you said, a lot, it's, it comes down to training for that. Yeah. Um, obviously everybody's going to be a little different. Someone who's less experienced is going to try and look through it longer, but that, that falls on that student and their instructor yep. or their family members who they're practicing with to really keep an eye on that. And, you know, I've gotten to the point where it is a split second yep. that I can get glance through. And if it's down the road, say construction that I want to see yep. more of it, I don't stay in the bioptic longer. I just glance, look back at the road, you know, m- multiple glances if I need to, but yep. never more than a split second because yep. I understand the safety of that. Um, I also try to not squint if I'm looking through it because I can still get some peripheral if I'm not squinting, and yeah. that's really important. Yeah. Um, and it all just comes in training, and some people will need longer training, yeah. and so it especially would... if they've never used a monocular during school exactly. time, um, and and really it's it's getting used to having that in your eye, um, and and how to how to. Um, dip your chin up or down and uh, learning how to be able to 
to see those objects in the distance very quickly, whether they are stationary and then whether they are moving as exactly. well and whether you're moving. And it's a whole set of different protocols you can go through these days. I didn't have the benefit of that, but, but many of you people here in the United States do. And and um, I'm learning so much being right here right now. Right. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a lot of people may need longer as a passenger because yeah. they're spending too much time in the bioptic. But it's so worth it that even if it takes you yeah. six months longer than someone else. Yeah, 100%. It's, you know, yeah. I, from the day I started with Dr. Windsor, that was January of 2013, I got my license March of 2015. Yeah. So it was a two and a half, a little over two year process. Yeah. Part of that was obviously waiting for approvals to get the bioptic and everything, but a good portion of it was making sure I knew how to use it properly. Yeah. Um, enough driving trainer hours. Arizona, um, I'm not sure if they have a requirement. I know that I went until I felt comfortable. Yeah. Um, because I knew what the responsibility I was taking on. Mm -hmm. um, and I yeah. would rather go longer in training, Me even too. if I didn't necessarily need it, yeah. um, to ensure that I had experienced a lot of conditions that were different. 100%. You know, you don't want to just practice driving the same route. Yeah. Every, you need to go out and experience, oh, what's this intersection? Yeah, this yeah. is weird. Yeah. This is different. Um, and be able to know to glance just a couple of times, but very split seconds. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, so um, lastly, um, what I'd really like to hear from you is a bit about um, your eyesight condition and... Um, and how does making adaptions for your eyesight condition for the driving task compare to making adaptions for other activities of daily living? And and, and the reason I'm asking this task, uh, this this question, is because um, um, in terms of the low vision world and the functional world, we know that adaptions are task specific, mm -hmm. and and um, something that you use for one task may not translate to another. Um, and um, people out there generally, even even optometrists, ophthalmologists who don't have training in, in, in low vision, don't understand the profound impact that those, those different adaptions make for you to be able to do something or not. Um, and that varies from eyesight condition. Exactly. It varies from person to person. Um, but um, we know for driving what works for us as complete acromats. So, so how about you run me through um, those adaptions for someone with achromatopsia and also maybe some um, how that would be different, say, for an education setting or a work setting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have spent a lot of years advocating for myself and what I need. Yeah. And I, you know, I've always tried to find eye doctors who are educated enough on my condition but mm -hmm. are open to hearing how I am experiencing what they're suggesting. If something's not good for me just because they think that's the right color, yep. I don't want to just be put in that color. And sometimes a lot of doctors will do that. They yeah. think they know more. Yeah, 100%. Um, and, yep. you know, I just tell them, you know, I've been living with this for over 50 years. I think I know, you know, if, if this is working for me or not. Yeah. Um, so I am one who does have a lot of different color contacts. Yeah. Um, because I always want to see best in whatever condition I'm in. Yeah. And if that means changing my contacts five times a day, I'll change them five times a day because it takes 30 seconds. Yeah. I mean, I've changed them in a moving car because I was a passenger and it was getting dark out and my contacts were too dark. And, yeah. you know, I've changed them yeah. in a moving car because it's too just, dark. Just to, <laughs> just to be, be clear, she changed Not them. driving. Not, not when she was driving. She was, she was a passenger. <laughs> yeah, I was a passenger. So I'm very proficient at changing my contacts. So prior to seeing Dr. Windsor, I had always either used straight red contacts because that was what was said. Yeah. This is what achromats used. And, and, and traditionally, even in the 1980s, um, research was done that said that reds are, are for acromats. But these days, they're actually moving to other variations now. Right. Yeah. Um, so I had straight red. Yep. Or I had um, dark brown. Because mm. um, I find reading with red difficult. Me too. So yeah. my current setup is I use, for driving daytime, I use NARS, which are a color from Dr. Windsor, which are like, they call it black red, but it's, I assume got to be super dark gray with just a hint of red. Yeah. So 
Because it has a hint of red, it definitely helps brighten up those reds and yellows, but it does not block the green light, yeah. which a pure red contact will make the green lights for achromats go away because of right. what color wavelengths they block. So you have to understand that. And I try to tell people prior to setting up my exact combination for driving, if you would have asked me with like my daily, what I used to wear, if I think I could drive, I would have said no. Yeah, me too. Because they weren't the right colors. They weren't yeah. dark enough. They weren't the right combination. So for, so I used the NARS for driving, but as soon as I got to work, I would change to Plano Browns because brown was, or gray, um, dark gray, because those are easier to read with because they don't change a bunch of colors. Yeah. And they're less, there's less eye strain versus having kind of the red Mm -hmm. over that and also a Plano because uh, my myopia makes the prescription makes my near vision blurry so at work yeah. I'd rather have near vision mm -hmm. throw on clear glasses if I need them so um, night, the same. Yeah. night driving I use a very low tint just a very 10 minute gray it is just barely tinted yeah but it does help a little bit with the um, headlights especially now that everybody has this crazy Those LED ones. LED lights, yeah. yeah. They're terrible even just for sighted people. But yeah. it's great because I know, I, I mean, I've even gone into a restaurant and found, oh, this restaurant's too dark for me and I changed my contacts. Yeah. I don't, to me, that's just part of life. And yeah. I'm always, I'm not seeing sort of okay in every mm -hmm. situation. I'm seeing great for whatever that situation is. Absolutely. And I actually spent four to six hours sitting at an intersection with all the colors from Noor mm -hmm. of their sunglasses, the whole yep. ring of colors. Yep. So, and so Noir has, you can buy from their um, store um, a metal ring that has um, tints, all of their, their tints. And, yeah, their and, little and discs. And they're like, like discs about, about this big. Yeah. Right. And so, yeah. And so, and I had two, two pairs of contacts I was trying at that time. Yep. And I hadn't even gotten I wasn't quite using the NARS yet, I don't think. Um, but I sat at that intersection with all the colors that I thought would work because they were, you know, dark enough. Mostly the reds, the ambers, the yeah. plums, and with the different. And we'd go through cycles of lights. And can I see the red? Yeah. Can I see the yellow? Can I see the green? How's the detail? Because some of the, the darkness was great, mm -hmm. but then there's not enough detail. Yeah. It just kind of mutes yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, and so I did that. I made a spreadsheet, <laughs> spreadsheet, right. what yeah. I could see, came up with my color combination. And, you know, yeah. for me, I'm in Arizona. It is sunny yeah. every single day, bright sun. Everybody really would say, like, here. why do you want to be there with achromatopsia? But I'm yeah. like, with the sun, you actually get more vivid detail Absolutely. than on a overcast High day where contrast. everything kind of gets kind of muted kind yeah. of together. Um, and sun gives you shadows. I mean, you could be driving and you could see, you know, the tire shadows mm -hmm. and you'd know that ahead of the car in front of you, there's another car because it might be a big car in front of you, maybe. And you're like, I want to go around him. But but you can actually see, oh, I see some tire shadows. Mm -hmm. So there's things like that that help out with driving or yeah. curb shadows. Yeah. Um, so sun works if you have the right color. So yeah. I have the, Nor con the uh, NARS contacts. Then I use the NOR. NOR um, Red number 90 is yep. what works for me. Red 90, it's a pure, 90 fit over. Pure red fit overs. Yeah. And then on my Architect scope, I use their standard brown filter cap. Yeah. And what that allows me to do is the red over the carrier lenses, mm -hmm. the red lights, the yellow lights, the brake lights, just, I mean, they are vivid. They're just bright. Yeah. Pop um, from a very, pop. very they, long I mean, you can distance. see them from a distance. A really long distance. Um, yeah. But because the carrier is red, it blocks the green light. Yeah. But my filter cap with the brown allows me to see the green fantastic. So I'm able to go between the two. Yeah. Um, and most of driving is situational also. Mm -hmm. It's much more important to know what the cars ahead of you are doing yeah. than whether the green's light. Yeah, the absolutely. Light is green because if the cars are stopped and the light's green, you're still not going through it. That's so you, exactly right. It's more situational. You see watch, the red. You see the yeah. cross traffic coming through so you know yeah. before you even see the redness. Or you've got cross traffic because obviously yeah. a red light. So with my set setup, I can see every color and you know brake lights on the highway which are super important and um yeah. then if it's a dark storm mm -hmm. i can usually use that setup for fairly overcast pretty dark yeah. days 
Um, but if it's super dark, I'll switch out the red fit over and the brown filter cap for just an amber slip in from Occutech. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do the same as well. Which yep. the greens are really good with that. The reds and yellows aren't quite as bright. So mm. I do, you know, take note of that, follow further behind on cars, just, yep. you know, just in case. I do the same. But it's never been an issue yep. in yep. And Susan, eight years of driving. Susan's so. been driving for eight years um, and is is a safe driver, never at fault accident. No, um, no accidents, yep. and no tickets. And, she, and she's been driving here in Arizona, but also you were driving in Texas. Yeah, Did I lived in Texas for two years. I drive multiple times per year to California to visit my family. So. Yep. And that's yeah. a, what, a six, eight hour drive? It's a, about a four hour drive. Oh, okay. But then yeah, I, four hour drive. two days later, I drive four hours back. Okay, so, 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 so yeah, eight, yeah. eight hours. Um, that's all on highway, you know, 75 mile an hour speed limit. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, Texas actually had one that was 80, yeah. 85, one of their interstate. Wow. So, yeah. Um, Amazing. And, and um, I, I essentially, uh, followed Susan's um, journey on the Achromotypes Here Support Network Facebook group as she was going through it and uh, was thinking about it for myself. Um, I also bought that, those rings and, and went through a, a, the same process as sitting at the traffic lights and changing my contacts and, 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 and having a look at the tints and I came up with exactly the same setting for me as well as a complete acromat. Right. Um, and and uh, we now know that there are um, acromats who, who weren't able to even consider driving previously. Right. Um, who, just like Susan, who are now driving, and some who have, have been driving previously, but then change to this setup because they then feel safer as drivers because they can see all the lights. Yeah, I know yeah. that there have been some people who, when they were originally driving, they were driving with just brown, yeah. which means they only saw green lights. Yeah. Um, now maybe naturally, maybe their vision was a little, they, maybe they could see the reds a little, but I know if, if I'm wearing straight brown, I have a very difficult time seeing yeah. red. So yeah. the red is, yeah. I find needed. And I knew that if I had to pick one or the other, it's more important to see red and yellow. 100%. Because yeah. if it's not red and yellow, then it is green. Yep. Um, but knowing that it's red, mm -hmm. you know, you can slow yep. down if you see brake lights ahead of you True. And, um, and, and stuff like that. And being able to see both the green and red, um, if say the traffic lights were out, yes. you, you could I go, would know that it's nothing. Yeah, it, exactly. You, you'd go, okay, n no red through the carrier, no green through the um, scope. Exactly. Uh, double check all the situational traffic around you, okay. Uh, it looks like the traffic's are potentially out. Portion, Correct. Slow exactly. Down. Yeah. And the and biggest that's all split split of a second stuff. Exactly. And the yeah. biggest thing about having being able to see both. Yeah. Is, um, we have here a lot of left turns. Yeah. Where the signal is got five signals on it. It's got red, yellow, green, solid for the mm -hmm. straight, and then on the same signal a yellow arrow and a green arrow right so yellow if you're in the green wow yes. so if you're in the left turn lane you might have the red solid on but the green arrow yeah right. so just the people turning have the light not the people going straight yeah and without having that um, being able to see the green light through the filter cap i was only able to see the red yeah because i couldn't see so that was why i spent all this time trying to figure out um the exact thing so I could have all the lights. Yeah, fantastic. But but then again, as we discussed earlier, um, there's no way we'd be using that setup for everyday living. Right. Um, so, so um, and and if we were use, using um, the Noir tints, I would not use the Noir 90. I, I use the Noir 570 for everyday living, which is like an, an orange color. Mm -hmm. um, or if it's bright for me, I'd use the Noir 99 or 93, which are a red or a brown. Right. Um, they're, they're, they're still still very dark. Um, but because of that cutting out of the green, um, I, I would not use that for cycling either. Right. Yeah, so um, I'd need to be able to uh, just use the 570s and because I'm not going as fast on a push bike most of the time, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, the 570s are fine to be able to see the green and the red, but from a, a lesser distance, so Correct. closer. Right, yeah. and like my everyday, like if I'm, I have some that are just my 
brown or dark gray. And I, my sunglasses are actually a super dark gray. Yeah. They're not even one of the, they're just some that I got from Dr. Windsor. That yeah. They are wraparound, but they're still just a dark gray. Yeah. Um, and then when I do wear my NARS contacts, like I'm out of the car from driving, I, I just have um, off the shelf gray, dark gray yeah. sunglasses. Yeah, um, cause you got those fantastic dark tinted, um, uh, contact lenses. Yeah, yeah. The, and the contacts make such a huge difference. And yeah. you know, I try to talk to a lot of other people about it, and you know, they, they've just done sunglasses, yeah. or just done off-the-shelf sunglasses, mm -hmm. and it's exponentially better. It it's not just a little bit better. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's life changing. It is. It is. Yeah. And yeah, I've even agreed. done a video that I shared in the eight chromatopsia group where I went outside yeah. and I described what I could see oh, I without my that. contacts, yeah. without my scope. And so I'm like, if I'm outside without any protection and my eyes are open, I can't see my house if I'm yeah. in my driveway. Yeah. Yeah. Yet, once we get everything done, I'm driving yeah. and I'm driving safely. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, it's all about same. the tints and all that stuff makes a huge difference and different vision conditions, other tints might be better than yeah. that, you know, need a blue or yeah, a green definitely. or purple. And, and, and I certainly think that there really needs to be a lot more research into how um, tinted contacts and tinted glasses help any person with a, a vision condition and also people who are, are colour blind yes. to adapt to the environment and, and the environment in general that's been built for people who aren't quite normally sighted. Yeah. Right, yeah, I've noticed when I have my, there are a lot of things I can see when I have my NARS in or any other red contacts Same. that I would miss out because, you know, it's red on black yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see that. Yeah, walking into the shops and and they've got oh, you know, a red dot sale, and all it is is these little red dots with with black writing on it, and I can't see that. Right. But if I put my my red contacts yep. on, it's like oh, now I can see it. So yeah. you can actually use the the like if I have brown contacts in and I had red sunglasses, you look up and down, and you yeah, can kind of figure out what too. color things are. You know, because the reds are going to make things brighter or lighter, you know, like yellow. And uh, then greens get super dark. And yeah. so you can pretty much manipulate and figure out what color things are. You know, like if I go into a grocery store with my red, my NARS in, <laughs> if a banana is green, it is a dark, it is dark yeah, green. Yeah, yeah. It's like, there's no question this is a green banana. Yeah, yeah. So, so funny story. I, I um, only had just started wearing these uh, 570 orange glasses. Um, you, using them for mountain biking and then walked in, into the store to go and buy some capsicum and and I'm looking at at, at the capsicum um, reading okay it says um, red capsicum but then I'm looking in and I'm going but it's a pale color and then I'm looking at the next one over that says green capsicum and and I'm looking in the box but they're dark and so and be because of the red, I was going. These capsicums are in the wrong boxes, and, and then, <laughs> then I, you realize. And then I realized, oh my glasses, and, and took them off and went, oh my god! Like I didn't say anything. <laughs> that was hilarious. Exactly. Yes. Yeah, but but it's about you know realizing that that change, mm -hmm. um, and and um, the last thing I I want to stress is that. Um, um, even w when you're driving and you've got this visual perceptual difference, mm -hmm. you know what it is. And, and so I've never been in any situation where having this color difference has mean, meant an issue in terms of confusion for brake lights or for um, traffic lights um, or, or um, anything regarding safety. Right. Because um, it's the set setup that I use on a daily basis. It doesn't change, and I've learnt to adapt to it over time. And and for me, this is what normal is. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, I've always, you know, ever since I got my learner's permit, I, again, knew what a responsibility it was. Yeah. That it was a privilege, whereas, you know, people who don't have to go through all this just yeah. look at it as a right and they're irresponsible, they're driving, they don't yeah. worry. I made sure from the very beginning I felt comfortable before I went somewhere. In the mm. beginning I was not as adventurous just to go somewhere with a GPS. Yeah. Because I had to, you know, really build up that confidence yeah. that, you know, if something comes up that I haven't seen before, I can do it. And mm -hmm. now, you know, I throw on the GPS and, you know, I might take a gander at um, 
Google Maps, Google, Google Maps Google satellite, satellite view, especially yeah. for like a big area where there's going to be a bunch of different businesses, and I want yeah. to know which one's mine. Me too. Um, so I know ahead of time, so I'm you know Google not Maps having to drive awesome. up and down in the in the yeah. parking lot, and you know what the best route is because some routes are going to be you have to sit here and go left across traffic, where even a sighted person's not going to want to sit there because it's it's not the smartest way to go. So yeah. I'll go a different route where I can just come in from the right and just yeah. boom, I'm in there instead of waiting for traffic, traffic, traffic to come by. And yeah, clever. It, that route planning is, is so important, right. especially when you're going somewhere new or right. something, somewhere that you may not go very often. And looking at Google Maps prior um, gives you that pre-planning ability mm -hmm. to actually see um, what's their real time, where the traffic lights are, where the lanes might split. Um, but or a lane might end. End, you know, like exactly. the right lanes end all the time. Here. Yeah. We have a lot of those, so I would yeah. look at that. And even in the very beginning, especially when I moved to Texas, because I wasn't as comfortable when I got there. I was a brand new driver. Um, things were very different visually there yeah. um, as far as the signal lights and stuff. I actually would f use, instead of using Google Maps or Apple Maps, I would actually use my Garmin because I could force routes yeah. by putting in waypoints along the way. So I could completely force it yep. to skip going on this highway I didn't like yep. or skip going here. Um, and that was a way I managed as a new driver Absolutely. to feel more comfortable. I do that now, too. of course, the highway, everything's you yep. know, good to go. But, yep. you know, I wanted to make sure I was safe. Yep. And so I made concessions on myself. Yeah to ensure that which made me become a better driver absolutely and, and especially driving in in texas i mean i just came from austin now and wow it's pretty much like driving in in this in city city sydney mm -hmm. city melbourne the culture is very similar to sydney or melbourne um and 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 the traffic and ro road infrastructure is very very busy um and, and um uh, some of that translates to other areas in, in Texas, but um, would you say that the environment was probably more complex there than here? Or I, I different think the, in I some think way? Just, I think a lot the color stuff was because of the yeah. signal had yellow around them instead of black. Yeah. So probably had I stayed there, I might have adapted my setup differently because yeah. what I did was perfect for here. Yeah. And once there, maybe I needed something a little different because they had yellow around their signals. Yeah. I might have needed something not quite as red so those yeah. stood out more against the you know, light colored sky. Yeah. Um, I was safe there, I just didn't like it as much. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and you weren't planning on staying there. Right. So, so um, your setup was perfect for, for, for where you were. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you know, they have, in, you know, they had storms there. I had no issue driving in, you know, yeah. torrential rains. Yeah. Um, just took it careful like anybody else. Yeah, and, excellent. Um, yeah. Well, um, I want to thank you very much for having this chat with me. It was probably a little bit longer than, <laughs> than we anticipated, but we really covered a lot of really important things. Um, right. And we really hope that anyone watching this has learnt a lot about achromatopsia, but bioptic driving and, and what you need to do in terms of doing those step-by-step -step processes um, and the fact that adaptions are so important and the person is at the centre of all that, doing doing that, that feedback and right. learning over time. And, you know, not everyone's going to be a bioptic driver, right. but, um, but we need to be given those opportunities to have those options of adaptions. Right, and yeah. I think anyone considering it needs to know that everybody who's a new driver is nervous. Yeah, Not just Absolutely. bioptic drivers, and I think a lot of them feel I don't know if I can do this, but so does 16 year olds to a yeah. degree that a 16 year old can, you know, ra rationally, you know, they might be a little braver because they're 16, mm. but they're still nervous. My daughter was nervous driving. Yeah, She's yeah. fully sighted. Um, and they also have to realize that sighted people make mistakes driving too. Yeah. They, they miss turns. Yeah. They accidentally go through a yellow that they shouldn't have. Yeah. They, that's, you know, everybody does that. It, it's so don't feel that just because you don't think you can see every little thing forever. Yeah. You know, we, we definitely see well enough to drive very, very safely. Yeah, absolutely. Very safely. Yeah, excellent. And just don't be, you know, texting and you know, don't 
have yeah. your eyes off the road. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Be a responsible driver. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And uh, keep your distance behind. There's a lot of things to do that everybody should be doing. Yeah. Not just by optic drivers. Yeah. Everybody should be keeping their distance behind exactly. other cars and exactly. not cutting off cars and yeah. not trying to go through a yellow that's basically done. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, well, thank you very much, thank Susan. Thank you. Yeah, it was fabulous spending time here with you the last few days. It thank was you for great. your hospitality. Um, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Bye. <laughs>